so after I have yeah. to zoom away. that way How does somebody in a wheelchair get in there? Well, we'll go in and ask. The greenish. Ah, the half the iron keeps this. There it is. The keep safe initiative. That's great. That's every single place we've been, we've seen it, where it's advertised. Some interesting, a lot more information here than we've seen any other place. Um, got to keep safe. Um, one punch is all it takes. Missing person. So it's a dog actually. Forgive me. Oh, that's a shame. That's a loss. I'm just filming this all. Yeah. Um, what's that? What are you filming? I'm just filming all the kind of information um, that's sort of available on offer. Are um, you filming the information for the, what? It's available for the public. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I, I just film it all. Uh, I go around public buildings, uh, government funded buildings, and just record um, just to see. I think they're interesting. I'm going to do a wee video about the history of the place and stuff. Um, so yeah, so I just thought I'd pop inside, but I was curious, how does a disabled person get in here? They have a disabled entrance. Ah, oh, right, okay, that's good, cool. alright, good stuff. Because you see these old buildings, they're not very disabled friendly, aren't they not? Um, so I was just curious as to how, I was passing by, I was actually making my way around there, uh, and I seen the steps, and I thought, you know what, I'll go in and I'll fill in the information. Um, and everywhere I go, I see if this is advertised to keep safe initiative, I think that's a great initiative. Uh, 
So yeah, so that's all. I'm just filming for my own recreation. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Where was I? Uh, I look like you were covering the cafe. Sydney's all over the place in Scotland just now. The community um, community places where they offer some hot food and stuff that's to tackle the, the cost of living crisis. And we have what we call a lot of warm hubs where people who are struggling to heat their homes and stuff can go and spend the day there and they can get, you know, hot cups of tea, coffee, food, uh, things like that. Um, again, we're not going to the politics as to all of that kind of stuff this day and age, but um, you know, it's the sad fact of life where we are just now. Um, and it's good to see that actually we're advertised here in the, in the police station um, for anybody coming in. Um, it's like I said, the other ones we've been, you don't really see much, the only thing we've really seen is uh, this is keep safe. Uh, let's head round there. Um, See that? It's not very good. The roof falling apart. Um, so yeah, okay, we'll head back around where we were. Um, let them over here. Put the border. <laughs> I read that news report that was saying that they reckon this place is going to need about six million pounds worth of uh, improvement to be done. Uh, <laughs> bring it up to scratch and you can see why it's a lot of these police stations I think were were built in the 60s and 70s and they haven't been very well looked after I don't think so that's why they they look so dilapidated and, and run down um, No access in there. Uh, <coughs> with how calm the water is today as well. I was hoping it was going to be one of these days where it's been so windy and wet, and that's where the the mic cuts it. Um, This can I suspect it maybe made the diver's job easier. Um, but Just in the side next oh, to that chair. Not back to the van.
Half is up. Half is up. Go ahead, Subby. No, you just the not side. pass the van. Is that ball? No, there's a major no. incident that's happened. We can't let you pass the van. The whole water front's cut off. The, they seem to be finishing up. The ball seems to be. Right, that's not the point. Right, it's not finishing up. Right, yeah. It's cut off, so unfortunately you can't get past the van. I honestly, I literally wouldn't need to buy that. I see, I like to see that old boat. Right, it's not me that's making the rules. Okay, we've been told to stand here. Nobody's to get past the van. Right. So we can't let you pass the van. What if you reverse the van up a bit? No. Why is it you're recording anyway? <laughs> I'm just, listen, I've been planning to come to Greenock all week. Uh, I go to different kind of towns and places in Scotland. I like to go and look at all the architecture, history, growing all the public buildings and kind of stuff. Uh, I've been planning this all week and then my colleague messaged me last night telling me that this incident happened yeah. here. Uh, and aye, so, like, so I've been in there. I've, I've, I mean, part of you come here all week anyway, yeah. see what I mean, so I just like to come around and film the kind of the towns, the history, I mean all the old buildings like Customs House and mm -hmm. all that, harking back to the, I mean that's built off the back of the slave trade and all this kind yeah. of stuff, I like all that kind of stuff, um, I like going into kind of police stations, public buildings, everywhere it's publicly accessible, just exercising my right to film, that's no, all. That's Absolutely fine, but unfortunately, just today we can't let you pass the van. Oh, well. <sighs> Does even that's technically no room there, like? Yeah, that's we've been told. Shut off as well. yeah, the whole of the waterfront's basically been shut off, yeah. so from our van. I know, I started down there. Uh, I started down there. Okay. Um, right. I was talking to the other two coppers, they seemed alright as well. Uh, you've been here all day as well, I take it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're finishing this afternoon as well? Should be, yep. Do you get made to stay on longer if something like this happens? Do you compelled to stay on? Just depends resourcing wise whether or not they need us to stay on. Right. Say, uh, say they say to you, right, you, we need somebody to work to stay on and cover this incident. Do you, have you got a choice? Mm -hmm. Aye? Uh -huh. You can say no. Because um, well, uh, I know people work in other kind of kind of public institutions like the NHS and stuff where if there's no any immediate cover they, they need to stay until they're yeah. relieved kind of thing. Uh, nah, it's just curious man. Uh, I can't film the stuff I came to film, do you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to... Just gives you an excuse to come back. Yeah. Aye, well, you could say that <laughs> aye. But, oh my god man, it's, there's no trains in certain parts of the country so it's actually been quite troublesome getting here. Where is it you've come from? Oh, that'd be telling. That'd be telling. <laughs> no, I'm, honestly, it's... I mean, I've been here before. I used to come here to the swimming and stuff when mm -hmm. I was a wee guy. Uh, used to like coming to the swimming here. The swimming here's great. Yeah. Um, haven't been in a long time. Uh, so, I was looking forward to my to my day. My day out. Um, but, I will only tell if you don't tell, right? Like, but what you're recording will tell. So. Ah, no, that's a fluid, <laughs> right, yeah, fine. Right. I'll blog you out, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll blog you <laughs> Oh, come on, right, man. Uh, do you. Is that, is that Corbin's afternoon there, aye? Eh? No. No, that's just. Basically, this is, this is where it finishes, uh -huh, so you, you can get round the side of EE pretty much. Alright. Are any live boats? I think they've got a bit of a base up there, aye. Ah, okay. What are we submarine? How are you not using name? Is that not what we submarine thing there, dude? Oh, that's cool. I don't know if they use that for the training. Uh, oh, that, that'll be the capsules, wouldn't it? Aye. I know people worked in the oil rigs and they do that training, don't they? Aye. They, they go in there, they fall in and they need to get yeah. out in a certain amount of time. Yep. Uh, oh, alright. Alright. Um, right, thanks for being pleasant. No worries. Right. No right, take yeah. care, see you later. Right. Guys, this is Greenock Police Station, and up until 1967, 
The Royal Borough of Greenock had its own police force and it was um, it was the Renfrew and Butte Constabulary. They reckon it had been going from about 1797. Um, but in 1967 it merged with Strathclyde Police Force and became a bigger and became a bigger force. Greenock's first Master of Police, Nathaniel Wilson, was appointed in the year 1800. And prior to this, crime had been tackled by a few special constables and town officers. And the article says here that Mr Wilson's appointment was an experiment. It's not documented how Greenock's first police chief kept a roof over his head and food on his table as he occupied the post for two years without payment. He was given a lump sum of £100 and an annual salary of £50. Mr Wilson resigned in 1815 and was replaced by John Lennox, who held the position for just two years. His successor was John McElrath. Robert Lyle was appointed superintendent in 1832. At that time, the whole force comprised a superintendent of police, two sergeants, five constables, three messengers at arms and twelve night watchmen. Now, in 1838, Alexander Mann succeeded Mr Lyle, and Mr Mann is credited with producing the first instruction booklet for officers of the Greenock Force. Issued in 1839, listen to this, it stated that a police officer, and of course back then it was very, very sexist, wasn't it? It was a, a male-dominated police, and it says back then that a police officer, he must be extremely sober and temperate, punctual, active and diligent in the discharge of his duty and shall, on all occasions, maintain a prudent and obliging behaviour. He must be firm, yet kind and conciliatory. He must not be cautious. Sorry. He must be firm, yet kind and conciliatory. He must be cautious not to interfere in the street and utter the phrase unnecessarily, but when circumstances require him, act with boldness and decision, and, at the same time, with coolness and perfect command of temper. It has been recorded that Greenock's first chief constable was William Newham, who succeeded Mr Mann in 1858. The same source states that in 1863 his successor, David Dewar, became the first chief constable to give the honorary title of captain. This title was dropped in 1945, when William McKechnie took over from James Christie. In the early 1950s, David Gray became the next Chief Constable. Greenock's last Chief Constable was David Williamson, appointed in 1958. Mr Williamson became the first and only Chief Constable of Renfrew and Butte Constabulary when it was created in 1967. Fascinating piece of history. So, essentially, the policing here in Greenock goes all the way back to the 18th century, um, which is quite incredible. Uh, and you wonder what, the, wonder what the population of Greenock was around that time, because um, it was quite a, a small force, wasn't it? I don't think it was as big today. The town Greenock itself goes back to the reckon about the 1500s. It was just a small village, and you know, as the uh, shipping grew, it it grew, um, opportunities grew, wealth was created, wealth to build extravagant buildings like this customs house.
Greenock Custom House. The Scottish Custom and Excise Service began in 1707, the same year as the Treaty of Union was signed, leading to the creation of Great Britain. Following the Act of Union, Scotland's trade with the world rapidly increased, and by the early part of the 19th century, Greenock was a thriving principal port of entry to Scotland. Greenock Custom House was designed by architect William Byrne in the neoclassical style and the foundation stone was laid in 1817 and the building became a magnificent landmark on the busy River Clyde. In 1828 the Custom House was praised as a grand national structure in the highest style of elegance. <laughs>